Hi everyone, it's me, Shadia Wade. Uh, as you can see, I have started wearing hijab, uh, or the headscarf, or the veil, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's up to you. But it's a decision that I've, I made, and I said, you know what, I'm going to do this, and I wanted to do it on the day of my shahada, but some things prevented me from being able to make my shahada today, but I decided to wear the headscarf anyway, or the hijab anyway, and so this is this is what you see. <laughs> um, like I've learned a whole bunch of different ways to style it, and it's really great. And there's so much information out there for uh, women who decide to cover it up as they would say, um, but I was really nervous today and really anxious and really upset today when I, when I was getting ready this morning to take my son to school of how the faculty would look at me or at my son because I'm a Muslim. And it really scared me, and it really made me fearful of what repercussions my son would have to face based off of my decision to wear the hijab. And my husband, God love him, he is amazing, and he held my hand the whole time and, you know, told me it would be okay and that, you know, whatever goes on in elementary school, they'll find ways, like kids will just find ways to tease each other, and it just happens, and if they tease him because I'm a Muslim, or they tease him because he has long hair, or they tease him because of the way his name sounds, or whatever, those things are out there, and they are all potential things that can harm my child, and that scares me because I don't want my son to get hurt in any way, you know, when you become a parent you want what's best for them, and, and being a person who deals with bipolar disorder, I try and part myself from my son when I start to feel anxious or depressed or angry or any sort of emotion that is really intense because I don't want him to see me like that. I want him to see me as his mom who is healthy and happy. I don't want him to see me as this self-destructive, violent, depressed, angry person and, you know, I've been so blessed and so fortunate to have a supportive partner um, while battling with bipolar disorder to kind of stand by me and stand by my views on um, wanting to keep my child safe, and our child safe, I should say. Um, like, he understands why, you know, I get overwhelmed at times, and why uh, I, I need to s separate myself from my son for his own benefit, and it's hard, because I want to be the mom he deserves, I want to be the mom who can be there for him all the time, not just when it's a good day, but every day. But I, I can't right now. And today was his first day of school, and I'm just so worried about him. But, you know, he'll be alright. He'll, he'll make friends, and the teachers will absolutely adore him because he is just the cutest little boy and he's so smart. He's so smart.
smart. And I'm just so blessed to call him my son. And I want him to know that I love him. Even when I have to push him away, I do it because I love him. Not because I don't care about him or don't want to deal with him, but because he's safer not being around me. He's healthier not being around me when I am in those states of mind. And I'm so sorry for crying. I just, it's just been a really emotional day, but I felt like I needed to share today with you. Um, because this is basically the story of my life with bipolar disorder and dealing with it. And I want you to know that you're not alone if you suffer with it, or if you know somebody who suffers with it, let them know that they're not alone. Like, have them, like, come to my page my my channel and subscribe and and talk and comment with me I, I will be glad to talk to you like I am open for conversation and I am open for debate about what you can and cannot do to help yourself you know like, I've been through it all. I've been through the cutting stage. I've been through the suicidal stage. I've been through the suicidal and homicidal stage. I've been through the psychotic stage where you're just hallucinating and things that aren't really there and thoughts and feelings are just vile to to your your own mind start coming into it and you're just like why is this there I understand and I want you to know that you're not alone and that if I can do anything to help you I will I will, I will be there for you and we can work through the battle together because it's a struggle every day. Every day is a struggle. It's a different kind of struggle every day. Some days it's just a little thing that sets you off. Sometimes it's a major life event that sets you off. Sometimes it's nothing. It just comes from nowhere. You don't know why. You keep asking yourself, why is this happening? Why am I feeling like this? And there's no answer other than just something is chemically wrong in your mind. Something just isn't right. And you need to seek out help. Like... You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Even when the horse needs to drink, you can't make it drink. It has to choose to do so. And I can only lead you so far to help. You have to extend out your hand and say, here, help me. And I will give you my advice and my insight. That's why I do this channel. I don't I don't do it for myself. I do it for all the others out there that don't have a voice. Just because I'm religious doesn't mean I don't understand a person who has an atheist view. My mother's an atheist and I completely understand her. I understand her reasoning. Like that makes sense to her. To me there is a God, 
but I still love my mother and I still respect her. And I can still love and respect anybody who comes from any sort of background and has any sort of view, uh, culturally, spiritually, it doesn't matter. We're all human beings. We all have thoughts and feelings, and we need to be sympathetic and have some empathy for one another. And I, I cry sometimes for all the people who are out there right now not getting any help and feeling alone when they're not alone. There are so many people out there who struggle like you struggle and they will talk to you but you have to make the first step and say something. You have to open your mouth, you need to write out a comment, you need to submit a message, you need to do something. But I'm here for you. It's, in my religion, if you make someone else happy, then you yourself are blessed with happiness. And you gain the rewards of making that person smile. And I feel like I was put on this earth not only to love my God, but to love my fellow man. To love and understand them. And to be compassionate. And to show them my love. And that is why I refuse to take down any of the videos that have my hair exposed. I do not believe that I am an object of someone's affections or intentions like that. When they watch these videos, I, I don't believe that. I believe that people who watch these videos are looking at me as an intellectual person speaking from experience. And he only wants to impart some wisdom, some advice. I'm happy with the person that I am, even though I have bouts of depression and sadness and loss and anger and so many feelings. But I'm here for you. And I feel like this is this is my mission in life to help people understand this disorder and to help those who maybe suffer from it or suffer from any disorder like MDD, major depressive disorder, which you know, bipolar disorder and major depressive disorder often times get mis misdiagnosed for one another. It happens. All the time. But I will tell you this. You are not alone. And there is a way. And there is help. You just have to take the time to receive it. I'm gonna get off my soapbox and try and go on with my day. I pray that everyone is well and that this message today brought some hope for you and that you reach out, whoever you are. If you're a person who has family that is suffering, if you are suffering, that I'm a shoulder to cry on, a, a person to vent to, a counselor, an advisor, 
a comrade. I am here. Just talk to me.